Yo, what's cracking mate? Here is a Ghidra setup guide follow up for WoW 410 with the build number 13850. It's a PTR version which has been compiled for macOS on the x86 architecture, so better than mine. Still, plenty of information to be mined for other versions as well. I assume you already have installed Ghidra, if not, check out my previous video for the 053 version. First things first. We need the binary in question. I found it in an old owned core thread. There are several links to a folder on mega.nz and one of the binaries included there is our target. Since it's a macOS binary, it doesn't have a file extension. In Ghidra, you create a new non shared project for the binary. I decided to use the same naming schema as before, but suffix my project names with either Win or Mac, depending on the OS. Now it's time to import the binary we just have downloaded into the Ghidra project. You can have a glance at the import results summary and then simply click OK. Double click the entry in the project section in order to open the application with the code browser. Since it is the first time doing so, Ghidra will ask if you want to auto-analyze the target. Click yes and just let it run with the default settings. Let Ghidra run its calls and wait for it to finish everything up. You most likely will receive some minor errors, which you can simply ignore. Now save and close the code browser, right-click the binary in the project section and choose to edit to the version control. I've begun to add all files directly to the version control before any changes have been applied at all. This way I always can see how things have been initially before I majorly fuck them up. When you open a specific revision from the history and double click it, Ghidra opens that record in read only mode in the code browser, just so you know. I close the read only revision record and open the real checked out version in the code browser. The following step you'll see now is optional. I just need it to show off something later and it's probably good to know that this feature exists. From within the code browser, click File and choose to export the program as C or C++ file. You can leave everything on default settings. I denote in the file name that this is the source for the initial version right after importing and doing the auto analyze. That's it. Once the export finished, I just click OK to close the window. Now I also can tell you why I've done it. This build of WoW has some debug information, but it is by far not as thorough as the 053 version with the PDB file. There are tons of names for variables, functions and data types, but those are mostly just placeholders without deeper information about them. Here is for example the same C3 vector data structure, but from the 053 repository. As you can see, the members and the data types are defined in all their glory. The goal is now to copy as many struct definitions from the 053 repository into the 410 project. And of course, you only can do this for the structs which haven't changed between those two game versions. Otherwise, Ghidra will be confused and the decompilation view will show you bogus information. Once I'm done with cloning over the struct definitions, I will export another C file and then compare those two with WinMerge in order to show you the quality change in the decompilation. An easy target for the first step are structs defined in the nTempest library. This is a Blizzard internal library from what I've heard and most if not all things in there should have been the same ever since. On wowdev.wiki you can see a page about common data types, which in essence contains the names of those n-tempest structs. I have noted down the names which actually have been used in 410. I am going to show off the process of correcting the struct definition in the new repository for one type only. As an example, I take C3 vector since it's one of the more important ones and it's referenced in other structs as well. You can simply right click on the data type anywhere it's referenced and then choose the menu entry in the context menu to edit the data type. If there are multiple definitions for a type, like here with the float for example, I choose the entry which is prefixed with the binary's name. 
Ghidra's structure editor is a bit wonky at times, and you'll need some time to get used to it. The plus button to add another component requires you to select the row below once you're done with the current one. Otherwise it will be added above, and there seems to be some major issue sometimes when changing types to bigger ones if they are not at the end of the struct. You will figure out the best way to work on your own. At the end, don't forget to set the struct to be packed, and also remove the description about being a placeholder. Save the new definition, and you can check one of the types off of the list. As you might have noticed already, the decompilation view of the current function changed because of our update. You can now correctly infer the member access of x, y and z of this. After having done this step for the mentioned structs, I saved the project, checked in the changes and exported the current version as a new C file so I can diff it with the initial one. As you can see on the left side, just changing those few structs led to quite some changes in the source. Let's scroll up and look at one of the struct devs we wrote. On the left side you can see the empty struct definition for CAA sphere and on the right our correction. Ok, time to see where this adjustment really shines. The decompiled code for functions which use those types. Let's have a look at the vector intersect AA box 2 function. And as you can see, looking at the decompilation now doesn't give us brain cancer. Well, at least not instantly. Correcting types and variable names in Ghidra is a powerful tool to increase readability and make your life a lot less like a waking nightmare trying to reverse those applications. This already concludes my Ghidra setup guide for 410 and I hope you learned a thing or two. If you are lazy or just don't have the time to fumble around in Ghidra just as much, I have uploaded the repository in the state you see it on screen for you to download, import and start off of. I also recorded a guide how to import such a project on your own machine. Just look at the pinned comment on this video. Suck suck.